Glory to Jesus Christ. Some of you may have seen a recent video posted by Father Zachariah Lynch. He's an Orthodox priest, I believe, in Colorado. I think he believes belongs to the uh, OCA. And uh, he, his video is basically uh, calling Uniatism uh, a manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. So I'd like to um, uh, respond to this. Not that I desire to enter into controversies, but when you have um, a, a fellow priest of Christ who uh, uses his um, office as a priest uh, to spew forth uh, lies and uh, hatred, it is the obligation, I think, of Christ you know, living in us to counter those lies, to counter that hate, and to proclaim the truth with love. I have many friends who are Orthodox, and I find um, that they are very um, humble and they demur to others um, who often are eager to jump to the microphone and declare what orthodoxy is. And I've found that most of these people who are quick to jump in front of a camera or a microphone to uh, defend orthodoxy are um, zealots from Protestantism, as is the case with this Father Lynch. Uh, but my friends who were raised Orthodox and have been Orthodox for many generations, uh, they embody a different type of spirit, I find. Those like Father Lynch who are the converts become the harbingers, the self-appointed guardians of Orthodoxy. And they become uh, a type of authority unto themselves as to what is and is not Orthodox. Now, this is really uh, unfortunate because uh, these people like Father Lynch uh, can very easily undo the good work that has been built up between Orthodox and Catholic over the past 60 years. This uh, brand of orthodoxy is quick to denounce what they call ecumenism, uh, and they, they see ecumenism as a sellout, as uh, uh, they, they use it synonymously with, um, oh, I don't know, the zeitgeist, or they, they use the term uh, pro, um, uh, ecumenism um, as if it is syncretism. And that simply is not true. Authentic ecumenism is simply living out what our Lord spoke of in the high priestly prayer in John's gospel, that they may all be one. Jesus gave us a commandment that we love one another. So any attempt on the part of Christians to live out that commandment, however imperfect those attempts may be, but any attempt on the part of Christians to genuinely live out the Lord Jesus' commandment that we dwell in unity as brothers and sisters and that we love one another. Any attempt in that regard is to be applauded and supported, not to be denigrated and not to be attacked as being some form of manifestation of the Antichrist. And so this is the, the most unfortunate thing about this is that you have these new converts to orthodoxy. I'm not orthodox, but I feel for my Orthodox friends who, as I said, have been Orthodox for generations and they have to endure these uh, bandwagon Orthodox who all of a sudden are going to undo all the good work that's been done these past 60 years because they are now the self-appointed guardians of Orthodoxy. What I see in people like this uh, Father Lynch, what I see is really... Um, Protestantism on steroids, because with uh, traditional Protestantism, you have sola scriptura, in which one man can go off and interpret the scriptures as he determines, and he can go off and become his own pope, form his own church, have his own congregation, until his congregants hit the repeat button, and they themselves do the same thing generation after generation, and here you have thousands and thousands of different Protestant denominations. And these Orthodox converts uh, from Protestantism are this on steroids because now they have two levers to play with. It's not just the sola scriptura, but it's tradition alone. So they have tradition that they get to interpret alone, 
according to their own personal whim. And then they have scripture that they get to interpret according to their own personal whim. And you read the, 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 the stuff that they write online and the comments that they say on, online, and it's not consistent with what the leaders of orthodoxy have agreed to with, um, with, with the Catholics in the official Orthodox Catholic dialogue. You look at uh, the writings of the Ballymon Statement. You look at any of these agreed upon statements, and they will acknowledge that there are difficulties. They will acknowledge there are limitations, but they at the same time acknowledge that, you know, we are brothers and sisters. And what you get from people like Father Zachariah Lynch is this, uh, uh, a form of ecclesiastical Gnosticism and ecclesiastical narcissism. It's Gnosticism because it's like he alone really knows uh, the true heart of the true Christians. And he says that in his most recent interview from, I think it's um, May 15th or May 16th, that he knows the true heart of who the true Christians are in the situation of Ukraine. I don't want to talk too much about that one. And then, uh, but he's also a, a type of, so there's a type of Gnosticism there, this higher knowledge of where the true church lies and it comes down to his discernment. It's, it's a form of spiritual snake oil underneath a very nice beard, I give him that, and a nice cross and a nice cassock, but it's spiritual snake oil because he puts himself as the nexus to determine who is the true Christian and who isn't the true Christian, who is the true church, who isn't the true church. And so uh, that's the, 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 the spiritual Gnosticism that I find in, in these remarks. And not only uh, Gnosticism, but their understanding of the church is, is docetist as well. It's docetist because this, this uh, uh, ancient heresy said that, you know, Christ appeared to have a body. So it, it's a heresy relating to uh, uh, Christology. But these people, like Father Lynch and others like him, uh, are ecclesiastical docetists. They don't believe that uh, the, the headship of the church has a body, is incarnate, is visible. They want to believe that it's spiritual and intangible. And this uh, idea of unity in the church is uh, ethereal. And that Christ is the head of the church, yes, which we all agree on, but that this headship uh, stops there. It doesn't take on uh, a visible form. And that's so contrary, so contrary to the understanding of scripture and tradition in the first thousand years of Christianity. Christianity has a head and the head of Christianity is the successor of Peter. He is the visible guarantor of the unity of the church. What has it gotten Orthodox to reject unity with Rome? It has gotten lots of confusion and more division. Lots of confusion because they don't know uh, who's in communion with who. You have a, a massive spider web when you look at the question of Orthodox communion. You know, are the Greeks in communion with the Serbs? But the, well, maybe, but the Serbs are in communion with the Russians and the Russians aren't in communion with the Greeks. And what, what about the long-suffering uh, Coptic Orthodox? Are they true Christians? Are they in communion with Moscow? Well, no, but then Moscow has uh, their front man that they appoint in Alexandria, and uh, he's actually following the, the Greek school, but he's in communion with the Russians, and it's, it's all convoluted. So their rejection of um, the principle of visible union with the successor of Peter has not helped them. It's led to confusion. They can't even call a grand council, an ecumenical council. They can't because there's no authority to do it. There's no emperor and there's no pope. So what is it? It degenerates into a web of national churches that are competing and rubbing up against one another. And it does not give any witness to the Catholicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It simply reduces it to a uh, patchwork of national uh, philatistic churches. It becomes a form of philatism. 
So uh, this, this, uh, this talk that Father uh, Lynch gives is also most unfortunate because he displays his profound, gaping ignorance on the question of uniatism. Uh, first, verbally, he says on two occasions in the interview, it's embarrassing to hear a priest speak like this. He says that, you know, uh, with uniatism, you had um, uh, Orthodox bishops becoming Roman Catholic bishops. I'd like to see a case uh, where that happened in the, in, the, in the 16th century, Father Lynch. And then he, later on in the interview, he says that um, Uniates are simply Byzantine Rite Roman Catholics. Well, I've never met a Byzantine Rite Roman Catholic. I'm, I'm Byzantine Rite, but I'm not Roman Catholic. So what is a Byzantine Rite Roman Catholic? The, v verbal miscues like that say a lot about our intellectual lacunae. That is really embarrassing. Anyone who wants to know a little bit about Uniatism and the history of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, should read Barbara Skinner's book here on the Western Front of the Eastern Church and Boris Gudziak's magisterial work, Crisis and Reform, on the Metropolitanate in Kiev, the Patriarch of Constantinople, and the Genesis of the Union of Brest in 1596. You know, Father Lynch, do yourself a favor, my brother, and read a little bit about the history that led to this union. Because in this uh, diatribe of a video you produce, it's very hurtful. First of all, because we don't need to have priests who are wearing the mask of ignorance. We, we don't need that. There's no virtue in showcasing our ignorance. Become literate on an issue. And so we have here... Um, in, in, in Father Lynch's video, we have a diatribe of ignorance. Now, he goes on a, uh, a kind of a long screed on the negative motivations that led to the Union. He's right on that. There were negative worldly mo motivations that led bishops to the Union of Brest in 1596. Sure, but there are all kinds of negative worldly motivations that motivate us day in and day out. Um, and you can go down the list from marriage to eating, you know. But there are also, on the other side of the coin, positive motivations for this. And he completely ignores those positive motivations. This video is not to go into that, but this book is it, those of you who want to know the facts. The other thing is, is that he says in this video, um, much to, I think, the shame of any honest orthodox, that you know the, the the true canonical church in Ukraine is uh, the Moscow backed church. You know the one that Patriarch Kirill has blessed to send missiles and bombs to drop on the residential centers, uh, buildings of Ukraine, the daycare centers, the nurseries, the hospitals. Yes, for Father Lynch, that's the canonical true Christian church, and uh, those Orthodox who oppose who oppose Kirill and his warmongering and his prostitution of the gospel of Christ for quick political PowerPoints with Mr. Putin. He, Father Lynch calls those Christians who oppose P uh, Putin and his puppet, Patriarch Kirill, he calls them cooperators in the spirit of the Antichrist. So this is all convoluted, my friends, that you have a, a priest who says that uh, the people, the Orthodox Christians, who oppose Putin's backed puppet church, they're not Christians, you know, because they break into the Moscow-controlled churches, which often uh, are, are an intelligence and control centers used by uh, Russian rebels in eastern Ukraine. And there are 52 priests who were arrested with evidence of, of cooperating with the Russians that those people who arrest them are not Christians, but the church that allows itself to be a conduit for Mr. Putin's fratricide and rapes and destruction, that's a canonical Orthodox Christian church. And we're to align ourselves with that. If that's Christianity, Father Lynch, I don't want anything to do with it. If that's your version of the gospel of Christ, then I spit upon it 
and I pray that you will escape from the fires of hell. Because any kind of religion that uses, or sorry, a- any kind of religious leader that uses the cross of Christ and incense and vestments to camouflage the murder of innocent men, women, and children and their mass rape in those areas where they were conquered by the Russians, any religious leader that does that is truly a servant of Satan. So I would challenge you, Father Lynch, to denounce publicly Patriarch Kirill because this is what he's doing. This is not propaganda. This is not my angle. He has blessed this war, which is a war in complete violation of every aspect of traditional just war theory. There is no way, no way that anyone can say Russia's actions align with classical Christian just war theory. They are in violation of it, in violation of it, bold faced violation of it. And so for you to be in communion, because you're OCA, with Patriarch Kirill, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. A further point, he speaks about uh, the Uniates wanting to align themselves with worldly power. And uh, there is truth in that in the 16th century that the Orthodox were denigrated and looked down upon and persecuted. They were second, third class citizens in Polish Lithuania. Father Lynch, you're right about that. And the motivation of those bishops to the Union with Rome, it may have been largely motivated by um, an easing of their worldly burden. You are right about that. And what you don't touch on, but you would have been right about it had you said it, is that the Union of Brest in 1596 did not lead to the Union of Christianity in the lands of Rus, Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, but it fomented greater division. You would have been right had you said that. But what came out of this, however, is something beautiful, very much like our, how our Lord can turn a Good Friday into an Easter Sunday. And what came out of it is a body of Christians, and you see them in Ukraine today, who are f- fully Eastern. There is nothing about, uh, for example, the Studite monks in Univ that is any less Eastern than what you would find in your own church at the OCA parish in Colorado. There is nothing less Eastern at St. Elias Ukrainian Catholic Church in Brampton than what you would find at any Russian Orthodox Church or any Ukrainian Orthodox Church. This is beautiful because it gives living testimony to the whole world that these men and women can be fully Catholic in communion with the universal church and fully and completely Eastern in their spirituality and sensibility. On the other hand, you have uh, the Orthodox who really lack Catholicity because their spiritual tradition of, I'm speaking about the uh, Russian Orthodox here, of which the OCA is in communion. They are not Catholic and they are uh, they, they give injurious witness to the gospel of Christ because they do not transcend beyond their own narrow Byzantine, Constantinopolitan, spiritual, liturgical tradition. You cannot find an example, for example, of um, Antiochian spirituality and liturgy or East Syrian or West Syrian that is in communion with the OCA. It doesn't exist. Now you will find the Antiochian Orthodox, but they've, they've taken uh, basically from Constantinople. I'm speaking about the, the oriental uh, riches of oriental, ortho, oriental Christianity. You can't. Because orthodoxy in this Byzantine form is an inward-looking tradition. It's not in communion with multiple rites. That's the riches of Christ's church, is that it is not contained in one single pillar, one single file of spiritual and liturgical patrimony. A final point about Father Lynch's video here is that he says uh, Uniatism is 
a concession to the spirit of the age and to the spirit of the Antichrist in which we seek to uh, lean on and depend upon uh, worldly power. Now, if that is the criteria of the Antichrist, then what is it about the Russian Orthodox Church that you're in communion with, Father Lynch? For there I see that that church, which you're in communion with, is the embodiment of that very definition. They are the ones who give money, who receive money, rather, from the state. They are the ones who are the official church in Russia. There are no uniate churches in Russia. When was the last time you saw my colleagues, Ukrainian Greek Catholic priests, having a church in Moscow open on the street? Never. You won't, you won't find it. Why is that? Isn't that interesting that the very definition that you give for the Antichrist, this spirit of um, uh, subservience to state power, is the very thing that keeps the Orthodox Church, what you call the canonical Orthodox Church, alive and afloat in Russia. There are no Ukrainian Orthodox churches in Russia. Why is that? And it's interesting that for 30 years, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church, which actively undermined this, the, 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 the integrity of uh, the Ukrainian nation, was allowed to exist in Ukraine freely. And, and they, they, they still exist in Ukraine under some conditions, of course, so they don't cooperate with uh, the warmongers to the north. So how is it that it's all right for the what you call the canonical Orthodox Church to bless bombs, to send in armies to destroy churches, which I myself have seen, Greek Catholic churches, to take our priests as hostages into Russia and not let us know where they are? That's canonical Christianity. That's true orthodoxy, according to Father Lynch. No, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. What is the spirit of Christ? And what is so good about uniatism? Well, the good thing about uniatism today is that we are living witnesses of the union of all Christians. The way we got here wasn't perfect. And uniatism isn't the path uh, to go forward anymore. We have agreed upon that, the Ballyman statement. But what we do want to say is it is beautiful it's beautiful because people can look at us today and say, you know what, this desired unity that we hope for in the future is actually present and real here and now in the lives of these Greek Catholics, Ukrainian Catholics, Byzantine Catholics, Uniate Catholics, whatever you want to call them. But we exist. We love the fact that God has given us this beautiful grace to be fully Eastern and in communion with the West and universal church as well. That is the embodiment of Christ's commandment to love one another and for Christians to dwell in unity. And for you, Father Zachar uh, Zachariah Lynch, to say that uniatism is a spirit of compromise with the world, is a spirit of the Antichrist, that is spiritual snake oil. And you need to convert. Proof of your conversion is if you publicly denounce Patriarch Kirill for what he is doing, because that, the murder of fellow believers, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. Eat your words, live out your words, denounce those who live out the spirit of the Antichrist in the person of Patriarch Kirill. If you do that, I'll give you a thumbs up. If you fail to do it, you'll prove yourself to be the coward.